There's a number of barriers to most people for high-end gaming, and this is where cloud gaming services can kind of offer the best of both worlds for many people across the globe. But with a few little extra tweaks, you can improve your cloud gaming experience almost instantly, and we're going to show you how. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. We need to talk quickly though about three things, latency, jitter, and ping. And why are they, and why they kind of matter, especially when cloud gaming is talked about. You may have heard of latency referred to as lag, and lag is one of the banes of many gamers' existences. And in simple terms, the most common experience of latency or lag will be when maybe pressing a controller input and then slightly after seeing an on-screen character perform an action or move. Jitter is a little harder to spot, but this is effectively when data packets don't reach their intended destination. This means unintended movements and just an annoying experience when gaming graphical glitches or audio or choppy audio even happens, and more can be prevalent when packet loss is high. Hardcore gamers out there will probably already know all about ping. This is just the time that it takes one data packet to travel from your router or your console or device to a server and back. A low ping is a good thing, and we'd say that anything under 50 milliseconds is about ideal. Above that 150 millisecond threshold though, and you may start to see noticeable lag, as we've just mentioned, that might affect your overall performance and experience. Naysayers will instantly point to these three tenets of internet connectivity as reasons as to why cloud gaming isn't feasible or not viable. That isn't the case though, or at least isn't the case for everyone out there, and it's worth trying these services out for yourself, as things like GeForce Now have servers dotted all over the planet to ensure an almost native level gaming experience that you just won't find elsewhere. But with that said, we understand it's not the same for everybody out there. So here's a few extra tips to get the best possible experience with NVIDIA GeForce Now. When you're gaming on a Wi-Fi connection, we would say try to avoid connecting your favorite controller or gamepad to your devices via a Bluetooth connection or a wireless connection. Sure, in most cases, this will make no difference and you'll never notice, but if you do plug in your control directly, it just eliminates another layer of potential packet loss and maybe some extra lag, and therefore could tighten up your experience on your favorite games just enough to be noticeable, and maybe you get those extra kills in your favorite FPS games. If you are gaming on your smartphone, for instance, or even a laptop, then try tweaking or tuning your Wi-Fi settings. We would say avoid using 2.4 gigahertz connections and ensure that you're connected to a five gigahertz network for the best experience. This should help as your connection should be faster across the board and stronger to boot. And it goes without saying that you can also try just getting closer to your router to maybe help bolster that signal connection. Although it's not always feasible, we also would suggest try connecting to your router via ethernet cable to get the most stable and consistent connection possible. It's always been known that wired is best. And if you can connect to your router directly or your network in this manner, it will give you the best experience possible. Cloud gaming does also rely on server connections, and so you'll need to make sure if you are playing NVIDIA GeForce now that you connect to the best server for where you currently are located. NVIDIA has a full list of global servers for you to select from, or you can just let the service automatically select what it thinks is the best option to enhance your gaming sessions. We would say as well, try using the test network option function within the app or within the Android app to check the health of your current connection and get more details on just what's going right or wrong so that you can make tweaks where needed. Sure, it is worth noting the free GeForce Now gaming tier is great and it plays superb with little lag or problems on a stable internet connection. You're still able though to enjoy over 1000 games, all fully playable in the cloud with zero installations, but thanks to the new RTX 3080 membership, PC gaming is fully portable and it gives you what can only be described as a native RTX 3080 graphics card on just about any device you own. That includes devices such as Chromebooks and even older PCs, which can access 1440p gaming at 120 FPS. So if you haven't already tried the RTX 3090 tier, which is $19.99 a month, we implore you to give it a go. Then uh, we will also mention as well, if you want a truly portable gaming experience, the Pixel 6 Pro, for instance, is one of the few devices that is capable of streaming the biggest titles at 120 FPS, thanks to that RTX 3080 tier. That's genuinely console beating power in your pocket any way you go with the benefit of working on a laptop, Chromebook, tablet, or any other connected device you also own as well as your smartphone. And that is a great service to tap into. It's also worth noting that Nvidia is also constantly working with studios to support more games, improve the cloud gaming experience across the board and give fans and subscribers convenient weekly updates 
courtesy of GeForce Now Thursday. So if you want to check out the latest and greatest news direct from NVIDIA, then we implore you to check it out. You can find a link down in the description to try GeForce Now for yourself. And thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring 95Google here on YouTube.